Okay guys, here it comes. Many of you have been asking for this. Here is my Adam S2V rant. I love these speakers. I love these speakers. They are amazing. You need to buy them. I could keep on doing this. But let me tell you why. Uh, during summer, there was a period of three months where I tested about $15,000 worth of speakers. I ordered them to my home. I made reviews from them, which I never uploaded. Uh, and I listened to them back to back to back to back. This was what I did all summer. And everything below that price point, I should check how much they are. I think probably they're around $4,000 a bear, pair, right? Uh, well, anything below that, I could always find some freaky shit that was going on with them. You know, just something always bothering me. And you know, if you go from upgrading from a $150 speaker set, then for me, it wasn't about uploading, up, upgrading from a certain price range. It was about really getting an upgrade that I could feel and enjoy that would fit my musical development that I've had in between. And I tried many speakers and they all had some weird stuff going on with them. And then my high hopes were on the Channel X, which were the worst disappointment ever. But maybe that's because I had my high hopes. Well, then came the Adams. I opened them from the box. I put them on these same stands in my main studio. And fuck, they were amazing from the first moment on. Like... They were amazing, and they were amazing in this kind of calm, mastery type of amazing. You know, where the guy is just playing his instrument so well, he doesn't even notice that you're listening. He's in his thing. You get to hear it, sure, but for him, you're not the audience, right? They're not playing for you. And, and he's just so good at it that even if he plays his worst, you are going to just be amazed. So... These speakers, I wouldn't consider them powerful in any way. Like I said, I took my Genelex, same size, to a festival of 150 people and they were enough for the festival, right? I wouldn't take these to a birthday of 20 people. They're just not that kind of speakers. I'm sure they would play their thing, but they just don't feel like the right thing there, right? Uh, so what these do is extremely elegant. It's well measured and it's just, it's just the right amount, you know, where everything is there in the most purest, most elegant form, yet it always re leaves room for imagination. Mm. It's never trying to impress anybody and you don't ever feel that the speakers are working for whatever you put in there. I mean, it's not an effort for them. And that kind of calm thing, it just makes music feel extremely natural. Like they can handle shit, you know. Uh, the bass ports on the front, are, I don't even know, like there are arguments about how much the port matters. But the bass is very much directional, meaning if you sit in a perfect position, then you feel the bass is very fast and the, the decay times are very quick. It responds very fast and it's playing for you. The bass feels intimate. And that's something I've never felt with any of the speakers I've had in my home before. The bass always flies all over the room, but it never feels personal. With these, the bass is definitely very present, um, but it's also, it has an ending. You know, there's a place, you know, there's bass here, but the speaker makes sure there's no bass here, like where the kick stops, the bass is gone. Um, and, and I love this kind of tight bass that this has. Uh, now, comparing them to the Atom A7X, these are every part that I wanted upgraded in them. Uh, when I got the A7X, I mean, I was blown away. But straight away I could hear that these are not my end game speakers. There were problems. I couldn't at back then even identify what they were. And of course they were a huge upgrade from my Yamaha's. But you could feel that there were problems. Now this one has more bass. It has a much more even frequency 
frequency range, yeah, and it's softer on the treble. And what I mean there is that uh, the Atom A7X is extremely detailed, for sure, but this detail can get tiring, it can get sharp at times. So it's like a, I would say the A7X is like a scalpel that has like, you know, like a broken scalpel that has kind of like this really sharp, like, I don't know, like a rusty scalpel, okay? Uh, so it's supposed to be extremely sharp and it looks like it and it feels like it, but there are some areas there where it will hurt you. It's not elegant. Well, then these are like an extremely sharp butter knife. Uh, they are elegant beyond belief for me. They have more detail in the high frequency than the Atom A7X, but this detail is way better controlled. It's just Again, it's the same with the bass. It's like, you know, if you get the sharp snap of a cymbal, then you get the snap and, you know, the signal is sending like, oh, decay, decay, but the speaker takes its time and still spreads some shit around there, right? These ones don't. They follow it very precisely what the instruments and the signal is telling them to do. Or, well, that's how I experience it. So it has, even though the highs are beautifully detailed, then they never sound harsh, never sound sibilant. Uh, there's just not a chance. Uh, I think the speakers actually have a quite a dark sound signature compared to some of the audiophile gear, but this dark doesn't mean lack of information. And that's the most beautiful thing, like every single like especially all the drums and all of the little percussive elements, like you hear them so well drawn out in the mix and and it's just like a different world opened up. Even with the Atom A7Xs, it was already a different world where suddenly, you know, the a very soft hit and a very harsh hit had a very strong contrast versus with my old speakers, they were quite similar, you know, so they are way more dynamic than anything you would expect in a lot in a cheaper price range, which sort of makes sense. But what I'm getting at is that the dynamic capabilities of these speakers are excellent. Unmatched for me, but I'm sure there, there is better stuff out there. The mids, mm, I don't have anything particular to say about their mids, but I can say that it just sounds incredibly balanced throughout the entire range. Mm. The highs, like I said, are very information rich and soft at the same time, but this soft is the kind of, it's not, it's not soft like on Procon Rockers, but it's soft, you know, it's well planned and intended kind of soft. Uh, so there's lots of information there and it's a beautiful experience to listen to. Now where these speakers shine even more, is the realism how they play real instruments like flutes or violins. They are able to move air in such a way that it makes it almost hard to dis distinguish it from a real instrument. You know, when a flute plays, then there's air coming out from the end. And then the vibrations inside move the air around and, well, that's the sound, right? Uh, well, these feel the same way. You don't feel like there's a recording of a flute moving the air around in your room. You feel like there's a player moving it, like there's just this little, like these little aspirations or this breathing of the flute and the flute play player that gets translated you to you in a way that I have not heard before. Um, Yes, incredibly realistic. And then we get to the separation of instruments and the placement of the instruments within the room. So if you have a flute here, and oh, I don't have any more things. Let's say you have a flute here and a violin here, then with a regular speaker, they would sort of you know, be like this. But with this speaker, you feel like there's a line of black matter, like a physical line between them that you can see or hear. 
you know, it's just so pronounced that sometimes you even find yourself focusing on the space between the instruments more than you focus on the instruments. And again, that's just a beautifully musical presentation. Yeah. So the Adam S2V, my glorious, beautiful little baby. Get these if you want excellent, beautifully crafted, small speakers. They are very honest. They are definitely for mixing, mastering. They are definitely for fun stuff, like we watch movies on these today. Uh, also, their DSP uh, works great. Like for me, these speakers, at first they, they still sounded great out of the box, but when uh, I put, I added like 2 dB of bass and it just made everything whole uh, in my previous studio. I guess that, that was maybe what my room intended or wanted, uh, but it just made them feel a bit more musical. And again, you can, you can upload it into the speaker. You have your user presets here and you can measure your speakers or their room using some other program, copy the EQ there and just redo it with this guy's EQ. I used uh, like, not Audacity, you know, what uh, Sonarworks, there you go. I used Sonarworks to first measure my room. And then I used my FL Studio to copy whatever Sonarworks wanted to do with the speakers. And then I manually just made, just copied the EQ again into these speakers. Now it takes time, but if you're not moving every day, which I highly doubt you are, uh, then it's a process that you can do and it will help a lot. Like whatever Sonarworks does, you can copy it with manually within these speakers and you can do your own favorite presets. You know, maybe there's a day that you would like to enjoy the bass and maybe there's another setting where you'd really like to enjoy the quiet listening. And these speakers respond very well to that. So when I was choosing between the Genelec A340 and these ones, uh, then the very fast and comfortable way uh, to do DSP on the Genelec uh, was a big thing why I was considering taking the Genelecs. But uh, these are able to do the same thing. It will just take you an hour or an hour and a half instead of 20 minutes. So for me, well worth the effort. Whatever speakers I have tried in my lower price ranges, then none of them have the same, same musicality that these speakers have. Uh, and you know, one more thing, you might have been thinking like, hey, this is your TV, it's your living room. How are these speakers here? Uh, and that's a very important point. They don't sound good. Yep. So you don't want to spend this much on speakers unless you have a very well treated room. And I've tried it with different speakers, you know, I've had many speakers in many different rooms just to, you know, learn about it really, just to get the experience. And they are, all speakers of this price range are extremely room dependent. So you want to have a well treated room because if you have them next to your Tele, then I would say a $150 Yamaha HS7 will do a similar job. Of course, there's a difference, but in this room, the difference between the Atom and the Yamaha, I would say it's around 10% maybe. Like the separation in this room is way diminished. Uh, the reality of instruments, it's just, it's not here like that. Uh, so if you're gonna get these, invest at least the same amount of money in acoustic treatment. That is where the Yamahas and those guys were, will be miles apart. A friend came to my place with the Yamaha HS7s and we did back-to-back -back listening with these. These and then the Yamahas, same tracks, we could switch really fast in my deck. And he went home and three months later he told me, I haven't listened to music at my place anymore because it sounds so bad. I reconnected the Yamahas in my home without treatment uh, and also having heard these and just having compared these and I just hear like mud and it just 
doesn't make sense to, for me to even use speakers anymore in my home. That's how much better they are from, well, yeah, a $300 pair, sure, but they are so much better that a guy comes, listens to them once, goes back home and says he has never used his speakers again and he will not before he gets speakers of this quality. So amazing recommendation, get it. Try and find some other reviews if you want. See if the store you wanna get them from has a return policy so you can get these, try them out in your home and then decide, but 100% my recommendation, save up your money, eat rice for three freaking months, do whatever you can, borrow money from your friends. If you love audio and you have a nice room, then take these speakers and they will be something you love forever. All right, that's the end of me today. See you in the next review.